Hi, welcome to this brand new series on Azure DP420. So we are looking at real certification question. This is the part one. Do not forget to click the join button. In future, there will be some parts which will not be free and can be accessed by members only. So please hit the join button. Let us look at the questions. Before that, hit the subscribe button. Subscriptions matter a lot. It will help you stay tuned to the forthcoming parts related to this series or other series as well. Now, what is this exam all about? This is about designing and implementing cloud native applications using Cosmos DB. If you see Azure, they are putting immense focus on this NoSQL database called Cosmos DB. So in order to clear this certification, you should have subject matter expertise with respect to designing, implementing and monitoring cloud native applications that store and manage data. This is primarily linked with Cosmos DB. So you should have used queries with Cosmos DB and created index policies. You should have used Cosmos DB.net SDK or at least know what and how it works. Plus basic interpretation skills with respect to JSON or C sharp or Java code or use of PowerShell. So in the cloud world, this is how it goes. If you are a kid, you do AZ 900. But if you want people to respect you, you got to do the higher certifications. So this is one of them. If you are from the data practice or data and analytics practice in your company, then this certification is for you. Now there can be people who do not have this experience. That is still okay. You can still go ahead and appear for this certification exam. This costs $165 and these are the language supported. And what is it they are measuring? So you see they are top heavy on Cosmos DB and they want you to understand the data modeling concept. Remember the data modeling here is a bit different compared to RDPMS like SQL Server and Oracle. The reason being Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database. And then you need to understand data distribution. But if you see the most, uh, th like the maximum percentage is on data model, and then the next best is you got to understand how to maintain a Cosmos DB solution. So stay with me. It it is far more easier to understand the concept and clear this certification. If you just go by what is the required skill, you might think this is not for you. But believe me, this is for you. And you got to get out of that zone of basic AZ-900. These are the certifications like DP420 or Solution Architect using which you can command respect in your organization. So this is what the question says. You have a container named container1 and that this is a part of Cosmos DB core. SQL API account and it has 120 GB of data. So this is the structure. So as you know, if you are not from a NoSQL background, in the RDBMS world, we have a very well-defined structure of a table. So if you have four columns, when you are firing insert statements, you got to put all the four columns unless some column is defined as null. In here, in with kind of document structure, so your tables are called documents. And in the, in the NoSQL world, from a data modeling perspective, the number of fields on, is not fixed. You can keep incrementing it based on your record requirement. Okay, so what it says here is uh, you got a partition key on order ID. You see this? order ID, ID property that means this order ID you have a partition key on this okay and this is how the question has been framed for you you got 
three queries and you got to say which one will um, will be a cross partition query so for me like i'll tell you how to answer this there's a trick to it so when you saw this information order id so any query which makes use of order id uh, they will not form cross partitions so do i see order id here yes this will not form a cross partition okay sorry my bad it it will the query will run as a cross partition query because it has it is a referencing order id plus it is a referencing order date so it has to cross the boundaries and it will be a cross partition query because there is already a partition or order id so in this case the the answer would be yes but if you see the first two ones so here it says if you run the following query the query will run as cross partition query so there is just order date being referenced so this will not make cross partition because you know the partition was on order id so this is no and the second one says if you run the query uh, this way customer id again it is not a part of order id it is not a partition so here also it will not make a cross partition so this, these would be my final answers now let us look at this one so you are designing a cosmos db solution to store iot devices and the write from the devices will occur every second so this is the structure of the document where it will write the iot devices will write now you need to partition select a partition key based on these requirements you have to select a partition key so the first thing is if i see the sensor values these to these i cannot create a partition key on these because these are core values so i need to create a partition keys based on the properties this this stuff now timestamp if i <coughs> you remember we, we we do not in iot world we do not do partitioning on timestamp the reason for that is it ends up creating hot partitions now what is hot partition it what happens is suppose if a bulk of the data comes yeah, in the first 30 seconds of that minute so you will have a partition which is like huge big and the other partitions will be small so that is hot partition and then you this the requirement also says that you got to minimize the partition skew so when you do this it is not minimizing the partition queue because skew means uh, minimizing means like uh, you should have multiple partitions with the same size so if you have one partition which is very big and the other is small then the skew is increased not decreased you have to decrease it so one thing is for sure i got to do it on device id the reason for that is because the device ids will be unique and that way i can partition the data based on the device ids because there will be so many iot devices which is sending the data so i can actually aggregate and say okay for this device this is a group of data set that belongs to this device so i have to use that for sure okay let us see at options the first one says to use timestamp as partition key this is wrong the reason i told you is because it will not decrease the skew it will increase the skew it will make one partition which is very big what if the entire data set comes in the first uh, part of the minute so the partitions will be huge and the other partitions will be small b says create a synthetic key using device id and sensor values so like i told you sensor values we should not use sensor values because these are all values this keeps changing so now in this case sensor one value you see true it can have true or false only so again it will uh, kind of it will not split the data it will not uh, increase the skew it, okay it, it you it will not minimize the skew okay everything should be equal partition then the third one says you create a synthetic key between device id and manufacturer this will again hog the data in one place because this device id there can be it can happen that this manufacturer has one or two device ids which is being used other device ids are from other manufacturers but again it will result in the data getting clogged in one big partition now the fourth one says create synthetic key using device id and random number so this will help because random number it will kind of random number would ensure that small small partitions are created which is equal in size so that hot partitions are not created and it will minimize this queue so this is my final answer now let us look at this option you maintain a relational database for a book publisher so this requirement is just like 
this is the table structure this was in the rdbms world now you have to switch to the nosql world so how will you uh, how will you arrange this so the the first thing is let us look at the requirement what it wants it wants minimize, minimized latency that means as fast as possible and then read operation it should minimize the operation cost the read operation cost also so normally if you want to minimize latency what do you do keep everything in one place even if you are in a network if you have 10 servers and you have application on one server and database on some other server which is 2 miles apart if you want to minimize latency, bring the database in the same server, same hardware, so that the latency is reduced. There is no latency due to the traverse through the network. That is what, how we did. So in this case, in uh, in this case, in the Azure Cosmos DB world, we sequence everything in one container. If you put everything in one container, it will be faster. So do we see containers? So I you see here create a container that contains a document for each author so author is also in that container document for book is also in that container so this would be fastest in other options you do not have this sequence this would be my answer see other ones what it is saying is you can uh, you can you can create a container for author and another container for book for so this will not help you reduce latency that's why i'm marking it wrong b says you create author book and uh, book author lnk documents in the same container so the difference here is this is wrong because the difference here is it is telling you that some author book author link will be there but actually how it is done in the real world is you have to in each book you embed the author id that is how you create relationships here in the nosql world and the last one says you create a container for author and a separate container for book again this is wrong i will not even read the next line so this is my final answer now let's move to the next question this is a question it looks tricky but uh, believe me this is the easiest question i have seen see this is the select query they have given and they are saying what will be the output that's the first thing how what will be the output is number see whenever you see something in this double quotes this is string so if you convert a string is number as a this would be false it will not return true because this is string but if you do is number of number this will return true so where you find a as false and b as true so you only see this option where you have false and this is true i would not worry about c i know now this is wrong this is wrong and this is wrong so option a is my final answer now let us look at the final question um, here we have to choose two answers okay so you need to implement a trigger which which will run before an item is inserted so before an item means you have to do a pre-trigger see there are two ways of triggering pre-trigger post trigger you have to do it before the item that means you have to do a pre-trigger do you see a pre-trigger here somewhere yes i see here so i got my first answer so this is my first answer now i have to look for one more answer so there is some stupid options also see option a is a stupid option it says append pre to the name of javascript so appending pre to the name of javascript will do nothing okay so uh, this is a foolish option option b says for each request set uh, set the access condition in request options so we don't have to we, in this case no, in always remember the thumb rule uh, in such scenarios they, we don't use access conditions we have to so this will not work and option d will also not work because it is taking for the consistency level in the request options you have to set the trigger name because you already have a pre-trigger now you have already set the registered the trigger as pre-trigger now you have to uh, for each request you have to set the trigger name in the request option so this is my answer now you might ask why because you have you have registered the trigger as a pre-trigger now you have to tell for each request which trigger name why which trigger name you have to use as a pre-trigger so these are my final answers let us look at this one they are saying that using cosmos db sdk they will replace the document by using optimistic concurrency what is optimistic concurrency see optimistic concurrency it gives you that feature no? that is suppose one record is there and there are two uh, two instances which are trying to update the same record now you remember that in the nosql world this is asset compliance but there is something called eventual consistency and so on so in this case it can happen that uh, one of the instances is trying to update this but the other instance read the before value not the after value so in order to avoid that we 
gives optimistic concurrency. What is optimistic concurrency? Concurrency in the request options, if you see, it is a part of consistency level. This one. And then we use e tags. See, in such cases, e tags are used for concurrency checking when updating the resources. This is perfect for our example. Our use case exactly wants that. But what is RID? See, every resource within the Cosmos DB database needs to have a unique identifier. So, this gives you the unique identifier for each resource, the ID associated with the resource. So, in this case, we are not interested with each and every resource identifier. What we want is in order to use this optimistic concurrency, what is required. So, these are my two answers. See, you can read this documentation, you can pause this video and read it carefully optimistic concurrency control. And this is a scenario they have explained like once a logical partition happens and one or two operations are trying to concurrently update the same item. So the database doesn't know the previously read value. So in order to avoid that, we used optimistic concurrency control. Okay. So this protects your data from accidentally overwriting changes that were made by others. Okay. It also prevents others from accidentally overwriting your own changes. Very important feature in the Cosmos DB world. And here you can see in such cases optimistic currency we always use e tag properties so that means you can trust the answers that i am giving for these questions so please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button so do not forget to click the join button this will help you get some more additional content which are value added which will help you clear the certifications and clear your concepts this brings us to the end of the first part of dp420 for azure certification Always remember that this is a very important certification. If you have done AZ-900, you can go for this certification. Even if you have not done AZ-900, you can appear for this certification directly because this is heavily focused around Cosmos DB. It costs $165, but it will help you command respect in your organization. Please try to get ahead of others. AZ-900 alone will not help you get into projects or complex projects. You have to do some advanced certifications like this one as well. See you in the next part.